I'm so excited for today's math lesson because we are going back to our methods of tens and ones and I know how much you enjoy using this math strategy. So we've done our number lines, we've done our make 10, we're going back now to our tens and ones to introduce a new representation. We've looked at it a few times before, but today this is it. We're really going to push it. We are looking at bar models. Now, before I get you really excited about your bar models today, I'm going to show you your do now. Now, the first do now, I'm going to model it just in case you've forgotten, and then you're going to have a go at the next question. So I'm going to flip my camera and show you what I'm talking about. So you should be able to see the do now underneath the visualizer uh, and the do now task is a part whole model. So looking at the below part whole model, you need to write down the calculation that's represented. Now I know that this part here is my whole, that this is one part and this is one part. When I have my whole and only one part, am I carrying out addition or am I carrying out subtraction? Hmm, I've got the whole and I've only got one part. That must be subtraction because if I had both the parts, I would need to add them together to get the whole. So I'm looking at a subtraction question. So I'm going to put in the subtraction. OK, now what do I already know? I already know that I have 26 as my whole. And I need to find out what 5 less than 26 is to find the other part. Now you could probably do this in your head, but if not, you could use your tens and ones. So I'll use my tens and ones just in case we've forgotten. In fact, actually, let's do it in our heads. We'll come on to tens and ones in just a few moments. 26 in my head, counting back five. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. The answer is 21. OK, now it's time for you to do your do now. I've shown you my one. You've got one very similar. Your do now is this question here. Now, I would like you to pause the video. So I'll draw a nice big pause symbol. Pause the video and work out this calculation on a piece of paper. Once you've worked it out, you can unpause the video and we can have a look at the answer together. And I'm welcoming you back in three, two, one. Welcome back. OK, so this time round, I've got my my two parts of my whole again. And this time I've got my whole. And one of the parts. So I need to try and work out my missing part. I haven't got one of the parts, therefore I'm doing subtraction. You're absolutely correct. So I start with subtraction with my biggest number, my menu end, and I'm subtracting my one part to find my answer. Now I know my number bonds to 20 and I know that 16 add four is 20, but if you weren't 100% snappy on your number bonds, you could always count backwards and the answer is 16. Well done if you got that correct. It wasn't so much about the addition or the subtraction within this, it was looking at the whole and the parts that we're going to be coming into in the next part of our lesson. So welcome back. I'm now going to share with you the PowerPoint for today and we're going to have a look at bar models. Now our star words today We've actually got quite a lot of them um, because we've got addition and subtraction taking place in this lesson today. But we'll get on to that in a second. These are our main star words. We've got our make 10, which is the same as regrouping. We've got partition, tens, 
ones, number line, using our deans, which is the representations of the tens and the ones, and using bar models. And for bar models, I'm going to do a bar, so my whole and two parts. Now, my next set of star words are all to do with word problems. And we've looked at lots of different ways to say addition and subtraction. But this is just a reminder for you. When we're adding in a word problem, it might say, how many do I have all together? How many do they have between them? How many extra do they now have? How many do they have combined? Add together. Someone is given more. How much do they have in all? And all of those phrases or words are prompting and telling us it's going to be an addition question. So you need to have a think. Which words mean addition? Hmm. All of them, don't they? Subtraction. Subtraction. You've got lots of words that can mean subtraction in word problems. Here are some of them. Minus. Lost. Less. Reduced. Fewer. Left. Difference. And take away. And all of those words and phrases can mean to subtract. So if you see any of those in word problems, you know it's actually a subtraction question. So today we're going to be having a look at bar models and there's a bar model on the screen at the moment. It's this nice big section here. This shouldn't look too unfamiliar to you because we have done bar model work before, but just in case you can't remember, our bar model always has a hole at the top and then two parts. Now, depending on whether it's an addition or a subtraction question will depend on which parts of the bar model we have. Now, for the first few questions we've got today, we're not going to try and work out the answer. We're just going to work out what calculation we need to do. So what words are being used in the calculation and using the bar model, what are we actually being asked to do? So I'm going to read to you uh, the steps to success and then we'll go through the first question. So the first step is to underline the key information. You know that we do that in every single question we do, whether that's reading or maths or even writing. What do you already know? So what, looking at that key information, what do you already know? Do you have two parts or do you have a whole and a part? And once you've worked that out, you need to write down the calculation. So let's go through this first one together. What is the key information? Well, the builder started with 35 bricks. They used 13 bricks. How many bricks did they have left at lunchtime? If they've used and they've got left, what do I already know? So I've underlined the key information. What do you already know? Well, I know that they started with 35. I know they've used 13. And if you use something, you're taking it away. And then it says, how many do they have left? So I know that I have got the whole, which is how many they started with. They started with 35 bricks. They've used 13, so I need to work out how many have they got left. So this is going to be a subtraction question because I've got the whole and only one part. So let's put this down as our subtraction question. We have got 35, which is our whole, and we are going to be taking away 13 to get our answer. Now we're not going to answer it now because that's not part of this step. What we're doing is just working out what is the question that we need to answer in the first place. So we have now worked out what we know and we've written down the calculation. Let's have a look at another one. Let's do this one together. What was the first thing that I needed to do? I can hear you. You're saying I need to underline the key information and you're not wrong. Absolutely. So Bob has 24 bricks. Sally has 35 bricks. How many more bricks do they have all together? Key information there is going to be my numbers and any maths words that I recognise that tell me what I need to do. How many more bricks do they have all together? They're my maths words. I've underlined them. Tick. Right now, what do I need to do? 
Well, what do I know already? Hmm. Well, looking at this, I've got. Well, if Bob has 24 bricks and Sally has 35 bricks and I have to put them together, then that means I have two parts. And I know as soon as I've got two parts, it is an addition question. So I've got two parts and no whole. So I need to work out what they add up to all together. So this time round, I've got 24 and I'm adding 35. And that's my calculation. And I've finished my last step. Let's have a look at another one. This time round, underline the key information. Hmm, do I need to underline builder? No, that's not key information, is it? It doesn't matter who it is. What does he have or what does she have? 25 bricks and he was given 13 more. How many does he have now? Well, he started with 25 and he's now got an extra 13. So he hasn't lost any and he's been given more, which means I need to add. So I've got two parts and I don't know what the whole is. I don't know what the whole is, but I can write down the calculation. So my calculation would be, oops, my calculation would be 13 add 25 equals. Have I done all three steps? Yes, I have. Last one. OK, you can tell me this time. What do I need to do? I need to underline the key information and the key information is. 46 and. 30, there's more and fewer. Right, OK, so how many did Miss Baldwin have? Hmm, Mr Wernick had 46 stickers. That's how many he had all together. Miss Baldwin had 13 less. How many did I have? So if Mr Wernick had 46 and I've got 13 left, less, hmm, 13 fewer, I need to work out what well, I need to work out how many I had, which means I've got a whole and I've got a part, which means it's. Well, it, yeah, you're right, it's subtraction, isn't it? Let's write down the calculation. So I always start when I'm subtracting with my minuend and my minuend is my biggest number. So I've got 46. Subtract. Subtrahend, which is 13. Wow, OK, let's now go through and match up some bar models to some questions to check our understanding. So on the screen you have got four, that's four questions. I'm going to do the first one with you and then I would like you to pause the video and go through the rest. Now you can do this verbally, you don't need to be writing it down, you could just um, make a decision as to which one is which and keep it in your head or you could write it down but I want you working out which one goes with which so I'm going to start you off. Um, I'm going to read the question. Bob the builder had 57 pipes, Sally the builder had 25 pipes, how many did they have all together? Now I know that when I underline my key information as soon as I see the word all together that means to add. If I'm adding, I have two parts and no whole. So I'm looking for a representation that doesn't have a whole. Hmm, this one and this one don't have holes. They have two parts. Now I need to work out which one is which. Bob and Sally, 57, 25. Oh, this one's got 57 and this one's got 25. Right, it must be this one. OK, let's draw a line to it. So that's the first one done for you. Um, I'd like you now to pause the video and to work out which ones match up with the rest of the representations. And when you're finished, unpause the video 
and we'll go through the answers. Welcome back. OK, so let's have a look at the next question. Bob has 62 bricks. Sally has 14 fewer. 62, 14. How many does Sally have? If she's got fewer, I need two fewer. That means less, less and fewer. That is a subtraction. When I've got subtraction, I have the Oh, what do I have when I have subtraction? I have the whole and one part. Right, let's have a look. Which one of these has uh, a whole and one part? This one has a whole and one part. This one has a whole and one part. Hmm, which one has got the right number? 62 and 14. Right, OK, so I can see there that that's got the right numbers and it's got the whole and it's got Bob and Sally. Brilliant. OK, I'm going to move on to my next one. Question C. There were 73 builders on site and 26 were driving diggers and the rest were building houses. How many builders were building houses? The rest, when it's the rest. Hmm. So there were 73 on site and I know that 26 of them are building houses. I want to know what the rest of them are doing. So I've got, well, I've got, hmm. Yeah, I've got my hole. I know my hole is 73. I know that 26 are um, using diggers. How many are building? I don't know, but that's what I want to find out. So let's link them up. And lastly, Bob has 28 pipes and Sally has 41 pipes. How many more pipes does Sally have than Bob? If I'm looking at how many more, does she have? I know I need to subtract. So I know she's got 41. I know he's got 28 and I need to know what the difference is. And the difference there can be represented with Sally's 41 and Bob's 28. Give yourself a really big pat on the back if you followed through and you managed to match those up correctly. So now that we can create a bar model to represent the calculation, we now need a strategy to answer it. So what strategies do we know? Well, we can always use mental strategies in our head. We can use our make 10 on a number line. We could use a bead string. We could physically use the tens and ones, or we could draw out our tens and ones. And that's the strategy we're going to be looking at today. Today, we are going to be drawing out our tens and ones, but we won't but we won't be um, regrouping um, or exchanging any today. We're going to keep it within, within our tens. So tomorrow we'll stretch ourselves and we'll think about regrouping and exchanging. But today, that's not what we're going to be doing. So let's have a look at the question. My question, well, all I've got is a representation. So the first thing I need to do is I need to work out what the question is. So I've got two parts. If I've got two parts, I need to add 24 and 35 equals okay what's my first step i need to draw the tens and ones for both numbers okay so i'm going to draw my tens and ones i've got 24 here which is two tens and Four ones, one, two, three, four. Uh, and now I need to add in the other number. So how many have I got? I've got 35, which is three tens and five ones. One, two, three. And five ones. One, two, three, four, five. OK, I've done that. I now need to count the ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If there are nine or less, write down the digit. And there were. There were nine. Now count the tens. One, two, three, four, five. Five tens is... 
50, five, five tens. Read the number, the number is 59. So the answer is 59. Done. Let's do another one. So this is an addition question. I know it's an addition question because I have two parts and I don't have the whole. When I want to find the whole, I have two parts and I need to add them together. I now need to draw out my tens and ones. I'm going to draw out my tens and my first number is 13 and I've got one 10 in 13 and three ones. One, two, three. My next number is 25 and in 25 there are two tens and five ones. One, two, three, four, five. Right now I need to count them. So I've drawn them both out. My next step is to count the ones. If there's nine or less, I write down the digit. Right, how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, there's eight. So I write that down because that's less than, um, that's nine or less. And then after I've done that, I then have to count the tens. How many tens have I got? One, two, three. And three tens is 30. Um, represented as three tens. Counted the tens. Now I need to read the number and the number is 38. Now there's one thing I forgot to do and you're probably all sitting there thinking, Miss Baldwin, you've done it wrong. What didn't I do? I forgot to write down the calculation, didn't I? Oh dear. So what was the calculation? Can you tell me now? The calculation is 13 add 25 equals, what does it equal? 38, brilliant. Oh, well done everybody. It's so important to write down that calculation. I can't believe I forgot. Let's look at one more. So I've got here again, it's addition. I've got two parts and I don't have my whole. So if I don't have the whole, it's addition. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the question because I forgot to do that last time. So uh, my first number is 12. And I am adding 12 to 24. Now I don't have the answer yet, do I? But I now know that I've got two parts and it's addition. OK, I need to draw out the tens and ones for both numbers and my first number is 12. So one 10 for 12 and two ones for 12. OK, next step, I then need to draw out the tens for the second and ones for the second number. So 24 is two tens and one, two, three, four ones. Right, I've done that. I've drawn the tens and ones. Now I need to count the ones. If there are nine or less, I write down the digit. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six, which is nine or less. So that's fine. I can write it down. And I've got now to count the tens. How many tens have I got? One, two, three, three tens. So my number to read the number is 36. Now all I need to do is complete the answer. So the answer is 36. Done. Um, we're now going to move into subtraction. Uh, which is slightly different and has different steps. So make sure that you get your head refreshed and that you're ready for some subtraction questions. So subtraction. Subtraction is different because this time around I don't have two parts and I'm not trying to find the whole. With subtraction I already have the whole. And in some ways it can feel simpler. This time around 
I only have to draw the minuend in tens and ones, not the minuend and the subtrahend. Hmm. Right, step one. Let's check that it is definitely a subtraction question. I've got the whole and the whole is 35 and I've got one part and the one part is 13. I'm trying to find the other part, right? OK, so it's definitely subtraction and I'm going to write out my subtraction question. I know that when I do a subtraction question, I always start with my minuend, my biggest number, 35. And I'm trying to find what that number will be if I remove, if I subtract 13 from it. So I've done that. I now need to draw out my minuend in tens and ones. So my minuend is the 35. So one, two, three. And how many ones? Five. One, two, three, four, five. OK, so I've drawn out my minuend in tens and ones. Now I need to subtract the subtrahend. Now to do that, I am going to cross them out. So I need to subtract my ones first and I need to subtract three ones. So cross that one out. One, two, three. Now I have to subtract how many tens I need to subtract. How many tens are there in 13? Just one. So I need to cross out my ten. OK, now I need to count them. How many have I got left? How many ones do I have? I've got two. How many tens do I have? I've got two. So I'm only counting the numbers that haven't been crossed out. So there's two tens that haven't been crossed out and two ones that haven't been crossed out. So my answer is 22. Let's look at the next one. OK, let's check. Is it definitely subtraction? I've got my whole and one part. That means it's definitely subtraction. What's the subtraction question? You tell me this time. Which number do I need to start with? Do I start with 13? No, I start with the biggest number. So the biggest number, the minuend is 46 and I'm subtracting 13 from 40. Oops. I'm subtracting 13 from 46. Right, OK, I need to draw the minuend in tens and ones. Uh, and there's 46, that's four tens and six ones. One, two, three, four, oh, four tens and six ones. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, I've drawn my tens and ones. Now I need to subtract the ones from my subject hand. And that's three ones. So one, two, three. Now I need to subtract the tens from subject hand and there's only one. So I'm going to get rid of one ten. And now I need to count how many have I got left. I've got one, two, three ones and one, two, three tens. So my number is three tens and three ones, which is 33. So the missing piece here is 33. Last one before you watch me model on the worksheet. This time round, we have got to check, is it definitely subtraction? Hmm, is it definitely subtraction? I have got the whole and I've got one part. Therefore, it is definitely subtraction. What is the question I'm trying to answer? I've got my minuend as 
36, you're well, well done, you're right. 36, and I'm taking away 28. No, I know. Yeah, sorry, it's 24. Equals, hmm, don't know that yet. Now I need to draw the minuend in tens and ones, and my minuend, my biggest number is 36. 36 is three tens, one, two, three, and how many ones are in 36? There's six ones. One, two, three, four, five, and oops, six. Okay, what am I subtracting now that I've drawn out the menu in tens and ones? I'm going to subtract the subtrahend ones. And the subtrahend ones, there are four ones. So one, two, three, four. And how many tens am I subtracting? I'm subtracting two. One, two, and lastly, I need to read the number and write it down. So I've got two ones and one ten. And one ten and two ones is the same as twelve. Done. So I've got uh, four slightly different questions to you, um, but I'm going to model them now just to go through um, so that you know exactly what you need to do, what it's going to look like. So the first thing is I need to underline the key information. There were 45 dogs at a show, 13 were spaniels, the rest were Labradors. How many were Labradors? 45 dogs in total, 13 are spaniels, the rest are Labradors. When it says the rest, I know that rest means um, that I've got to subtract. So I know that my whole is 45 because that's how many dogs there are in total. And as soon as it's a total, it's the whole. Um, and I know that 13 are Spaniels. I don't know how many are Labradors. My question then is my minuend is going to be 45 because that's my whole and I'm subtracting 13. I don't know the answer yet, but I do know that it's subtraction and now I need to write out the calculation. Next, solve the calculation using your tens and ones. I draw out my minuend. One, two, three, four tens and five ones. One, two, three, four, five. I don't draw them small. Um, I don't draw them as dots. I need to see exactly where they are so that when I cross them out, I don't get confused. And now I need to solve the calculation. So I need to take away my sub to hand, uh, the ones first. So taking away three ones. One, two, three, and then taking away one ten. Let's add them up. I've got one, two, ones left and one two three tens left which gives me a total of 32. okay let's have a look at the next question first step is to underline the key information lara has 39 sweets lise has 16 sweets less than lara less means that mm, less less is a subtraction word how many sweets does lise have well if i know that lara has got uh, 39 she's got more than she's got the whole so she's got 39 uh, I know that Lise has 16 less so she's got 16 less what is the amount she's actually got what's the calculation Lara's got 39 our minuend our total and we're taking away 16 to find out how many Lisa has got so I need to draw out my calculation using my tens and ones I've got three tens and nine ones two three four five six seven eight nine can you see how I've not done them all on top of each other so it's really clear when I cross them out right what do I need to cross out I need to cross out my six ones one two three four five six and I need to cross out one ten how many ones do I have left one two three how many tens do I have left one two so my answer is 23. Okay, next one. Luca the Builder had 32 bricks. Tallulah had 15 bricks. How many did they have all together? I've underlined my key information. All together means I don't have the whole. If I don't have the whole, I need to add. So I've got here Luca with 32. So he needs the bigger part because Tallulah's only got 15. Now I need to know 
what do I need to do? I need to add 32, add 15 equals, and I don't know that part yet, that's the part I don't know. And now to add, I draw out my tens and ones for both numbers. So 32 and 15, two, three, four, five. Now I just count my ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I count my tens, one, two, three, four. And the answer is 47. Last one, Mr. Wernick has 26 oranges and Gore has 13 oranges. How many oranges do they have between them? Now, between them means they're going to be put together. If they're being put together, I don't have my whole. I've got two parts. I've got 13 that Gore has and 26 that Mr. Wernick has. So my calculation is 13 add 26. I don't know the answer yet. I need to use a strategy and I'm going to use my tens and ones. For addition, I draw out my tens and my ones for both numbers. Two, three, four, five, six. Notice again that I haven't drawn them on top of each other. How many ones have I got in total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three. Thirty-nine. Now I'm quite confident all of you can carry out the tens and ones method, but that is a refresher just in case you had forgotten it. Um, so that when we take it to our, the next level tomorrow, you will be quite secure in the foundation. So, good luck, enjoy your sheet, and I'll speak to you later. Bye!